So now we're going to be looking at two possible solutions to solve our reverse a string computer science challenge, which by the way is a very common problem that you may even face in an interview context, so make sure you're capable of solving it. The first solution we're going to be looking at is not the most efficient solution, but it's one that you're supposed to be familiar with and capable of implementing. I'm going to go over it uh, quite rapidly, and we're going to be focusing on a second solution, which is simpler and is the preferred way of doing it because it's more efficient. So the first solution is in fact a solution that was suggested by my way of explaining the problem. When I was explaining the problem and I was indicating that you had the string made up of multiple words and I said that the last word would come and occupy the first position in your output string and the second to last would come to the second position and so on and so forth and then you'd have the first one come to the last position. Well essentially we could do that. We could create a buffer where we'll store the same string except with the words reversed in their order. So we're going to examine a string starting from the back right here and going to the beginning and every word that we detect, every word that we find, we're just going to copy it to that buffer that we create right here and we're going to do that for every single word starting from the end and essentially in the end we're going to have this reverse string. Now the, the issue with this, with this solution is that is this is just the temporary buffer that we're creating to solve the problem which is really unnecessary. We could find a better, better solution that get, gets rid of this temporary buffer. So let's just quickly look at how it works. So the first thing we do of course is allocate space for that buffer and it has to be of equal size as the string. So you're just going to create that buffer right here and you're going to make sure it's equal size as the string. And then what you're going to do is, just like I explained right here, you're going to scan the original string in reverse direction. So starting from the back, going forwards, or going backwards to the beginning. And then you're going to copy word by word to the buffer. So every word that you encounter within that original string you're going to copy it to our new buffer starting from the, 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 the beginning of the, the, the buffer to the very end. And this way you will reverse the order of the words. And to do that there's a slight challenge because you're going to be looking at, so suppose the word was this, and this was the ending of a string, and you started right here. You can't really copy character by character because then you'll have the dot here and then S and then I and then H and T. This is clearly not this. What you have to do is keep track of an end, so identify the end of the word and then keep on moving backwards or towards the beginning of the string until you encounter a space. When you encounter a space you know that you've reached the beginning of the word and you've already identified the end of the word so then you go on and you perform the copy. So this is an extra thing that we have to do. We have to first look at this, the complete word until we identify its beginning. Then when we know where it starts and we know where it ends, we can then go on and copy it. We can't perform the copy as we're sweeping. We have to sweep, stop, learn the new information, where is the beginning of the word, and then copy it. So this is what I say here. You identify the end of the word, you find the start of the word, and then you copy that word. So this is where the copy occurs. You copy it from the start to the end of the word to the buffer. Then when you're, when you're done doing this, scanning the entire string in the reverse direction, then you can overwrite the original string with the buffer, which the buffer now will contain your reverse string because you've copied every single word from the original string to this new buffer in the reverse uh, order, and then you're just going to take that buffer, copy it onto your original string, and then deallocate the memory for the new buffer, and then you're done. So the user will know that they'll have to read that string that they passed, and they will have the original string in its reverse order. So let's look at the implementation of that algorithm in code. I'll go over it quickly. So here I'm just including some libraries that I need. Um, this is the function prototype and you notice here that I changed it from void to int because we're performing a memory allocation and memory allocations could fail so we need a way to indicate to the user, user that the, the method has the, or the function execution has failed and this is how we're going to do it. So I put that exception but in the second solution we won't need to return anything. So the, the function is called reverse string, it's being passed a string that needs to be reversed. 
The first thing we do is we store the length of the string that is being passed to us using this function. And then we're going to create a buffer of equal size as the string that is passed to us. So we're using that information right here, the length of the string, to create a new buffer of characters. And that buffer will essentially have enough space to hold the same amount of characters within the, the string that was passed to us, plus one. This plus one is for the null character at the end of a string. So uh, uh, in C, that's how you identify the end of a string. You need a null character. Car I'm just going to put char here. So this is where the verification occurs uh, in case the the buffer or the memory allocation failed. If the memory allocation failed for whatever reason, then this will essentially be null and we return a minus one. So this is the extra thing that I added right here. And then we get to the actual algorithm. Before we do that, we just do some initialization. This i is going to be the i that sweeps over the string going backwards in reverse direction. So i sweeps over the entire string starting at the end. So it will start right here, meaning that's why I, I give it l minus 1. Because l will be essentially right here. l minus 1 is that last character here. l is the null character in the string, and we don't need to be concerned about that. We'll just add it to the buffer at the end. Destination is where we're going to be writing in the buffer. And destination starts at 0 because we're going to be starting at the beginning of the buffer. So here we start at the end, we copy them, copy the words to the beginning, so that's why we have destination zero. And um, end and source will essentially allow us to keep track or identify the words that we copy. End will identify the end of the word, so we'll start right there, the, its index. And source will go over the word as we copy it. So this is where the action happens in this while loop. So while i is greater than or equal to zero. So that means while i is actually still within the string, because i is starting at the end of the string, so let me redraw it. This was the string, this was our buffer. Okay, so disregard this. This is our string, this was our buffer, and, and we said that i starts right here, and destination will be right here. And i will be going in that direction over the string. So while i is greater than or equal to zero, this is the zero position. The moment it goes to a negative, then that means we've essentially completed the sweep over the string. So this is ensured by this while loop. And then this is what we do. This is where a condition, we check for something. We check that if the, the, the character that we're looking at happens to be a space, then what do we do? We just copy that space right away to the destination of the buffer because the space doesn't need to be reversed. We just copy it. So suppose I was pointing right here, and that happens to be a space separating two words. We're just going to copy that space to wherever destination will be pointing at. So this is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm copying to the buffer at destination from the string. And after this operation completes, I'm going to increment destination and decrement I. So I is going backwards, so I'm decrementing it, and destination is going forward in the buffer, and so I'm incrementing it. So this is a simple copy of a space character, not a word. And this is where, if it's not a, if it's not a, a space, then it has to be, then we're dealing with a word. Then what do we do? We identify its ending. So the moment we hit a character, then we know that we're at the end of a word. After we've been through a space or at the very start of looking at a string. So we identify the ending. We say end is equal to i. So we keep a pointer right there. So let's just suppose we started right here and there was a word here. So I put end pointing at the very end. And then I'm going to do this while loop. While I am not encountering any spaces or the end, I haven't reached the beginning of the string, that is I'm not going overboard here, then I'm just going to keep on decrementing i. I keep on decrementing i to reach the beginning of the word. So suppose this was our string again and it ended with this, this being the word, and then um, say hello, this, and then you had a space right here. I would be pointing at the period. I identifies this position to be the end of a word, 
So end is going to be pointing right here. And then I, I just keep on decrementing it. Decrement, 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 until it reaches that space. The moment it hits a space, it's going to come out that while loop. And I'm going to assign source to I plus one. So our source will be pointing to the beginning of that word that we need to copy. And this is where the copy occurs. We're going to go from source to end and just copy to the buffer. So we're taking this, uh, the character from the string, from the source position to the buffer at the destination. And then I increment source and I increment destination. I could have done these two increments within this right here. Just like we did here. You could perform the, uh, the assignment and then do your increments. Or you could just do them after. It's the same thing. So we identify the end of a word. We find the start of the word. And then we copy the word and so on and so forth. When we hit a space, we just copy the space itself and then go backwards right here and then do this process over and over again until we reach the very end here or the beginning of the string. And then at that point we would know that we've copied the entire string in its reverse uh, in the buffer. After we do that, we essentially null terminate the buffer. So we put a null right here, null character and we've already reserved space for it and then we copy that buffer onto the string the original string that was passed to us we deallocate the memory that was assigned to buffer and then we're done we return zero as being success so this is the first solution which isn't the optimal so solution we're going to be looking at a better solution in the next video